Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's video I have something a little unexpected. I have a phone in the studio today and no I'm not talking about my normal smartphone. I'm talking about this Pine phone right here that just arrived and I'm really excited to check it out. Now phones aren't something I normally get into on this channel. In fact this is actually the first video I've ever done on this channel that has anything to do with phones. Just not something I'm normally interested in but I am interested in this, checking this out, this Pine phone right here. And in today's video, I'm going to do an unboxing. That's all I'm going to do today. I want to basically use this for a week or so and get an actual opinion after using it for a while. But I figured until I get that ready, I may as well show you guys an unboxing to tide you over. And then in a week or so, or however long it takes for me to get a good opinion on this, I'll come back and answer the question, is a Linux phone a usable thing for me? Can I use it as a day-to-day phone in 2020. That's what I'm going to try to determine by checking this out. But let's go ahead and get this unboxed and see what's inside and what it looks like. I'm excited. Let's check it out. All right, so let's get this thing out of the box. So I'll just remove the wrap if I can. Too lazy to actually get a pair of scissors. Okay, easy enough. All right, so here we have the actual box. So I'll just try to get this into frame so you guys can get a good look at this. So it does look pretty professional. And as you see here, this is the Pine Phone. Well, actually, it says that right here on the side. And it says Community Edition as well. Specifically, this is the Postmarket OS version of the Pine Phone. They periodically release different versions of the Pine Phone based on different distributions or operating systems from time to time. So that's pretty cool. But anyway, let's go ahead and open this up. We get this introducing Postmarket OS card that gives us some information. We also have a user manual. Simple enough. But here we have the pride and joy. See so if I can get this out of the box here. We have a couple things here, and this is this is kind of taped to the side. So we have the Pine phone right here, the actual phone, and this wrap. And, you know, it weighs about the same as any other smartphone I've ever held. So it doesn't feel light and cheap. It actually feels solid it, and, you know, it feels well produced. So I'll just see if I could show you guys the, um, sorry for the camera angles here, but basically we see the actual Pine phone on the back. Then we have the protective cover over the glass, as you can see there. More on that in a moment. So also in the box we have whatever this is. What is this? I'm a little lazy, so I'll just rip this right open. Not the best when it comes to unboxing, but you know what? I'm trying. I just remove that. So looks like we have our charger. Standard USB-C, as you can see right there. And of course we have the uh, USB end right there. It's interesting that we have a red charger cable. That's pretty cool. Now what I don't see in the box is a power brick. That's pretty interesting. But we do have this. And this is actually very interesting. This is a dock of all things. It's a USB-C dock. So I don't think my camera's focusing very well, is it? But essentially we see the actual dock. We have a uh, ethernet end right here. And then of course we have HDMI. So essentially, this should allow us to use the Pine phone as a computer plugged into a monitor, a keyboard, and a mouse. That's going to be so awesome. And now for the actual Pine phone, I'm going to power this on. And I don't have a SIM card in here just yet. I'll activate it off camera when I go to check this thing out. But I'm going to go ahead and turn this on. Let's see. I think it's, it might, might be this button right here on the side. Let's see. I'm going to hold it down. All right, so it's not turning on, which I assume is because it's not charged, so I'm not really worried about that. But I am going to take this uh, 
protective plastic off here. And they've already applied a screen protector, which is pretty cool. Something I would have loved to have anyway. So there you go. So I figured out why the phone isn't turning on. And, you know, it really does help to read the instructions. The battery is actually disabled by default. So the back of the phone actually comes off. I've already loosened it. And then we have this plastic tab right here, which is actually preventing the battery from making contact with the phone. So we can remove that somehow. And I just took the battery out and it's just a little sticker essentially. So here's the battery. I'll go ahead and put that back in. And now we have the battery back in. So now the battery is enabled. And here we have the smartphone that's actually started up. I'm just looking for updates right now. I'm going to show the actual screen in the review when I get that done. But um, it's all set. It's ready to go. And yep, I lo it looks like I do have some updates. Kind of hard to orientate this to the screen considering the uh, portrait mode here. But I will try to add a screen recorder to the phone in the review to give you guys a more clear look at what it actually looks like. So I'm excited to try it out. Now I apologize for the awkward camera angles and the fact that the camera just can't seem to focus in. This is one of the first videos with some new equipment that I'm setting up to convert my channel to completely 4K, so pardon the bugs. Anyway, back to the Pine Phone. I've had it for a little while now and I still haven't had a chance to actually record the review just yet, but I will. I'll get that out as soon as I can. My first impressions of the phone so far is that there aren't really all that many apps available for it. And it does seem to run a little bit slow. So for example, if I open up Firefox, and I'm not going to edit this part of the video so you can see how long it takes for Firefox to open. As you can see, it took a little bit of time for Firefox to open. And the entire operating system does feel a little sluggish to me. So what I'm going to do is spend some more time with it, maybe even try some different operating systems, and then I'll be back with a full review as soon as I possibly can. In the meantime, go ahead and click on that subscribe button if you haven't already done so, and I'll have the full review uploaded as soon as I have it done. I'll see you then.